Greetings, mother factors. My name is Sam, and today I'm going to be talking to you all about the best Korea, South Korea. You guys have been requesting South Korea for a long time now, and we've finally caved in. Proving once and for all that peer pressure is an effective means of getting exactly what you want. Wunderbar. But how, oh how, has a popular American TV show affected the Korean language? What do Koreans say instead of cheese when taking a photo? And what is a BTS? Is it bad? It sounds bad. Oh god, I've got BTS, haven't I? I haven't got long. Please just tell my girlfriend I love her and to destroy my computer. That's very important, that second bit. Anyway, <clears throat> two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so chuck on your hanbok and do a shot of soju to prepare yourself for some terrible pronunciations, because, you know, that's my forte, as we give you 101 facts about South Korea. Number one. South Korea, officially the Republic of Korea, is a country in East Asia, constituting the southern part of the Korean Peninsula, which is this dangly bit here. Look at it. Look at it. Number two. As you can see, South Korea shares a land border with its evil twin, North Korea. To the west is the Yellow Sea and mainland China, and lying east is Sunrise Land, across from the Sea of Japan and the Korea Strait. Directly south is the East China Sea, which opens up to the Philippine Sea and Pacific Ocean. Number three. The name Korea is derived from Kaguryo, which was a powerful ancient kingdom that was established on and around the Korean Peninsula in 37 BC, lasting for over 700 years. Number 4. The name Kaguryo means high and clear, which is nice. However, a slightly more poetic interpretation of the name Korea is land of high mountains and sparkling streams, which is also nice. Number 5. South Korea has a total land mass of around 38,750 square miles. That makes South Korea roughly the same size as the US state of Indiana, which is now something you know. You're welcome. Number 6. South Korea also includes over 3,000 islands, most located off the country's ragged southern coast. Don't know why I said that so sexily. By far the largest of these islands is Jeju, located in the Korea Strait. Number 7. South Korea lies in the North Temperate Zone and tends to have a humid continental and subtropical climate. The country has a predominantly mountainous terrain, with arable lowlands constituting only 30% of the total land area. That basically means they can't grow food there. Number 8. Not only that, the vast majority of South Korea's land is covered in trees, as 64% of the country is forested. That's tremendous, eh? <laughs> God, why am I like this? Number 9. The human component of South Korea is comprised of an estimated 51.4 million people, or roughly 25.7 million people post Thanos. Number 10. God. Uh. South Korea's largest city and capital is Seoul, which has a population of roughly 10 million people. That means that one in every five South Koreans live in the capital. A further 15 million people live within the Seoul capital area, meaning roughly half of all South Koreans live within this metropolitan area. Number 11. In addition, roughly 2.1 million South Koreans live in the good old U.S. of A, mostly in cities like New York, Chicago, and Seattle. The first Koreans began immigrating to the United States in 1903, more than half of which emigrated to the islands of Hawaii in order to work on sugar and pineapple plantations. Number 12. Archaeological evidence suggests that early humans first inhabited the Korean Peninsula roughly 500,000 years ago. That's almost 500,001 years ago, people. That's a lot. Number 13. Later on, the Korean Peninsula was settled by Tungusic-speaking peoples who migrated from Manchuria and Siberia. These groups formed the dominant ethnic foundation of the Korean people and spoke languages that eventually developed into modern Korean. Well done to them. Number 14. The first recognizable political state to arise in the Korean Peninsula was the Kojoseon. The affix Ko, meaning ancient, distinguishes it from the later Joseon dynasty, which we'll get to later, my impatient little darlings. Kojoseon was founded in 2333 BC in the north by the legendary figure of Dangun, who is said to have been the offspring of a heavenly prince and female bear that had been transformed into a woman. I mean, sure, whatever works, I guess. What? Number 15. Kojoseon mostly covered what is now North Korea and the Chinese region of Manchuria, but it stands as the foundation of modern Korea, so I felt it was worth mentioning. One of the earliest states to form in what we now know as South Korea is the state of Jin, not that kind of Jin, which was established no later than the 3rd century BC. Number 16. By roughly the 1st century BC, Kojoseon had developed into a league of tribes in an area of the Taedong and Liao rivers. They eventually evolved into three main rival kingdoms. Oh, it's like Game of Thrones, isn't it? Kokuryo, Pekche, and Shila. This was known as the Three Kingdoms period because it was a period of time in which there were three kingdoms. I thought you'd have got that on your own, but I explained it anyway. Number 17. The Three Kingdoms were also joined by the Kaya Confederacy, which was a collection of city-states located on the central section of the Korean Peninsula's southern coast. 
The Kaya Confederacy managed to stay independent for hundreds of years throughout the Three Kingdoms period, because it was a funky little polity that did its own thing. Number 18. However, the Gaia Confederacy never fully developed into a centralised kingdom, and those utter rot banks in the Schiller Kingdom eventually annexed the Gaia Confederacy in 562 AD. Those rat bags. Number 19. Over an eight year period between 660 and 668 AD, the Kingdom of Schiller conquered and unified the Korean Peninsula with the assistance of China under the Tang Dynasty. This formed the later Schiller Kingdom and for the first time created a united Korean identity. Number 20. However, the state's rigid class system caused stagnation and unrest in later Schiller, and in 892 AD the kingdom fractured. This resulted in the re-emergence of the previous kingdoms Kokurio and Pekje, in what is sensibly known as the later Three Kingdoms period, because, well, uh, well you know by now. Number 21. In 918, the leader of later Kokurio was ousted by a dude named, and by the way, yes, this is completely legit, I'm not making this up, his name was Wang Kong. Okay, Wang, big space, Kong. Anyway, Wang Kong. <laughs> anyway, Wang Kong went to conquer Pekje and Shila, unifying the country once more under a new name, the Koryo Dynasty. This was the first truly unified Korean state in the history of the Korean Peninsula. Number 22. Despite a brief period between 1170 and 1270 in which the government was controlled by military regime leaders and experienced several Mongol invasions, Koryo existed as an unbroken dynasty that ruled Korea for 474 years. Number 23. The Koryo dynasty fell in 1392 and was replaced by the Choson dynasty, which lasted an impressive 518 years. That's almost 519 years, people. And that's maths. Number 24. In the 1590s, the Korean peninsula was twice invaded by the Japanese in a conflict that is collectively known as the Imjin War. Japan's forces were repelled by the ingenious military tactics of Admiral Yi Shun Chin, who was never defeated at sea nor lost a single ship under his command to enemy action. What a ledge. As such, Admiral Yi Sun Shin is considered one of history's greatest naval commanders, even greater perhaps than the naval commander of my heart, Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, weren't expecting that, were you? Number 25. In 1897, the Joseon Dynasty changed the official name of the country from the Kingdom of Joseon to the Empire of Korea, in the misplaced hope of an auspicious future that wouldn't be completely upended only 13 years later. Number 26. Only 13 years later, however, Japan finally annexed Korea in 1910, bringing the Korean Empire and its monarchy to an end. The Japanese exercised strict colonial control over the Korean people, and forced them to speak Japanese and practice Shintoism. Number 27. I hope you're ready for a sad serious voice, because these are dark facts, people. During World War II, approximately 5,400,000 Koreans were conscripted by the Japanese to alleviate labor shortages that developed as a result of the conscription of Japanese males. Roughly 670,000 of these were taken to Japan, where they were forced to work under appalling conditions, leading to roughly 60,000 deaths. It's estimated that between 270,000 and 810,000 Korean forced laborers in Korea and Manchuria also died during this period. Number 28. The Imperial Japanese Army also abducted from their homes nearly 200,000 women, over 80% of whom were Korean, and forced them to work as slaves for Japanese soldiers. Known as comfort women, they were sent across China and Southeast Asia, and were subjected to the brutality one would expect from forced female slaves. Roughly three quarters of these women died during the war. Number 29. At the end of World War II, Korea was released from the Japanese colonial rule when Japan surrendered to Soviet and US forces, who occupied the northern and southern halves of Korea respectively. Despite an initial plan to unify Korea, failed negotiations and escalating Cold War hostility between the United States and Soviet Union eventually led to the establishment of two separate and ideologically distinct governments. Uh oh. Number 30. In what is known as the Division of Korea, a separate election held in the US zone in 1948 created the pro-West Republic of Korea in Southern Korea, now commonly known as, <laughs> you guessed it, South Korea. In the North, the Soviets appointed Communist Kim Il-sung as the leader of North Korea, which has since become infamous as pretty much the worst place on Earth. Sorry, not sorry. Number 31. Both Koreas then pursued authoritarian repression of dissent within their respective regions, with each considering themselves to be the true descendant of historical Korea. A bit like, you know, in a psych ward where you get all these people thinking they're Jesus, like that. Tensions continued to flare, and on the 25th of June 1950, North Korea invaded South Korea, sparking the Korean War. The conflict, which involved the United States, China, the Soviet Union, and several other nations, lasted for three years until reaching a stalemate in 1953, by which point roughly 1.2 million people had already died. Number 32. At this point, the two Koreas agreed to create the Korean Demilitarized Zone, a buffer zone between the two countries that remains the most heavily fortified border on Earth. 
The 4 km wide border, commonly abbreviated to DMZ, stretches 245 km across the Korean Peninsula from the Yellow Sea to the Sea of Japan. Number 33 In the decades since the division of Korea, between 100,000 and 300,000 people have made the perilous decision to escape from North Korea, most of whom fled to Russia or China. Roughly 30,000 North Koreans eventually made their way to South Korea. By comparison, very few South Koreans have ever defected to the North. Number 34 as a result of the demilitarized zone's creation, much of the natural wildlife and rare plants along the border have remained untouched for over 60 years. This has allowed unique species of plants and wild animals to flourish, such that the area is now recognized as one of the most well-preserved areas of temperate habitat in the world. Number 35 Though North and South Korea signed a ceasefire in 1953, the conflict never officially ended, meaning North Korea and South Korea are technically still at war. However, Kim Jong-un and Moo Jae-in met in the DMZ in April of 2018, officially signifying the end of the war. Number 36 Following the Korean War, South Korea struggled with political instability and autocratic governments well into the 1980s. It wasn't until a former army general named Roh Tae-woo won the country's first free presidential election in 1987, following a period of military rule, that South Korea finally transitioned away from its turbulent past. Number 37 South Korea is now a presidential republic consisting of 17 sexy little administrative divisions. Of these, 9 are provinces similar to US states and 8 are special or metropolitan cities. Number 38 In 2012, South Korea elected Park Jiyun hai as their first ever female president. In doing so, she became the first female president popularly elected as head of state in East Asia. Good times. Number 39 However, in 2017, Park Geun-hye was later impeached and ultimately sentenced to 24 years in prison after she was found guilty on multiple counts of abuse of power, bribery, and coercion. Bad times. Number 40. Both North and South Koreans speak Korean. Shocker. Korean consists of 14 consonants and 10 vowels, and is written with an alphabetic writing system known as Hangul, which was personally developed by King Seon the Great in the 15th century. Prior to that, Korean was written using Chinese characters. Number 41. In fact, more than half of Korean vocabulary is ultimately derived from Chinese, which reflects the influence that China had on Korea over the past few thousand years or so. Those Chinese dudes really get around. The meaning of life One of the most common ways to ask someone how they are in South Korea is to say, Have you eaten well? I wish more people asked me that instead of just looking at me and assuming I have. Oh, the chubs. Number 43 Amazingly, the Korean word for Swiss army knife is Meikai Bokal. Kal is an entirely Korean word meaning knife, but Mei Kaibo is derived from the title character of the iconic American TV series MacGyver. Wow, this is the best fact so far. Big fan of this fact. Number 44. Mm. Funnily enough, <laughs> the Korean phrase for light a cigarette literally translates to attach fire to a cigarette. That actually makes sense in an excruciatingly literal sort of way. Number 45. The current flag of South Korea incorporates symbols and philosophies of Buddhism and Taoism, with a red and blue yin-yang surrounded by four symbols representing heaven, earth, fire, and water. The flag is known as Taeyukji, which literally means supreme ultimate flag. Number 46. The Hibiscus syriacus, a flowering plant species also known as the Rose of Sharon, who's Sharon? is South Korea's national flower, where it's known as Mugang Hua. The flower is even mentioned in the national anthem, so yeah, it's a pretty important flower, you guys. Number 47. Both the tiger and rabbit are important entities of Korean folklore, and are found throughout Korean folktales and art. Some Koreans even say that the Korean peninsula is shaped like a tiger and others a rabbit. I mean, sort of, if you squint and ignore, like, a lot of it and add ears, it doesn't really. Number 48. The most common family names in South Korea are Kim, Lee, and Park. More than a fifth of all South Koreans, in fact, have the last name Kim. Number 49. According to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, South Korea has the highest estimated national IQ in the world. The country with the lowest IQ is... Oh, wow, okay, nope, not really in that. Far too controversial. True, but controversial. Moving on. Number 50. South Koreans are some of the most overworked people on Earth. In 2018, the South Korean government was forced to pass legislation introducing a maximum 52-hour work week, down from a punishing 68 hours previously. Number 51. Although South Korea enjoys very high living standards, suicide is a serious and widespread problem. In fact, South Korea has the highest suicide rate in the developed world, according to the World Health Organization. Number 52. South Korea boasts the world's fastest wireless speeds on the planet, though, with an average download speed of 33.5 megabits per second. That's nearly three times the average speed of second place Hong Kong. Number 53. Not only that, an incredible 99.2% of all South Koreans have broadband access. Number 54. South Koreans are also some of the biggest smartphone users in the world. 
As of 2013, 78.5% of the South Korean population had a smartphone. Among 18 to 24 year olds, that figure jumps to 97.7%. Hello if you're watching, gang. Number 55. According to the South Korean National Information Agency, 14% of South Koreans between the ages of 9 and 12 are addicted to the internet. In 2011, South Korea passed a law called the Shutdown Law that bans anyone younger than 16 from accessing online game sites between midnight and 6am. Number 56. Not only that, in 1999, South Korea passed a law requiring all online shopping and banking to be done using Internet Explorer. As of 2016, that law is still in place, which I genuinely consider an abuse of human rights. Number 57. By law, every South Korean man is obliged to perform 21 months of military training at the age of 28, which seems sexist in 2018, but hey ho, what ifs? Aside from those with disabilities, the only South Korean men who are exempt from conscription are successful Olympic athletes and footballers. Number 58. South Korea has a controversial national security law which forbids citizens from showing support for North Korea in any context. In 2016, a 73-year-old South Korean man was sentenced to a year in prison for praising the North on his blog years previously. Number 59. Adultery was only legalized in South Korea in 2015. Prior to that, the crime of cheating on one's husband or wife was punishable by up to two years in prison. Number 60. South Korea is known for a fairly unique practice within its criminal justice system, in which people suspected of crimes such as murder are taken back to the scene of the crime, where they are forced to recreate it in public. Not only that, the media is often invited to take pictures and publish details about the crime too. It's weird. Number 61. South Korea is the largest market for plastic surgery per capita in the world, with some estimates suggesting that one in five women in Seoul have gone under the knife for at least one cosmetic procedure. Number 62. One of the most common plastic surgery procedures performed in South Korea is eyelid surgery, in which the skin around the eye is reshaped to create a crease in the upper eyelid. This procedure is controversial as many people suggest it's done to appeal to Western beauty standards. Even so, the surgery is so popular that some wealthy South Koreans receive double eyelid surgery on their 16th birthday. Number 63. South Korean men are particularly evolved when it comes to makeup, with as many as one in five South Korean gents reporting to using makeup regularly. In fact, men in South Korea spend close to 90 million US dollars a year on makeup. Nintendo 64. The national dish of South Korea is kimchi, which is a combination of fermented vegetables and spice. The first written description of making kimchi dates to the 13th century, and today there are literally hundreds of different varieties of the dish. Number 65. Kimchi is so popular in South Korea that when taking a photo, South Koreans say kimchi instead of cheese. Which implies that kimchi is better than cheese, which it isn't, because literally nothing is better than cheese. Number 66. Although it may be shocking to other nations around the world, dog meat has been eaten in South Korea for centuries, and is still served in certain Korean restaurants and street markets today. However, this practice has become increasingly controversial in recent decades, and contrary to popular belief, only a very small percentage of South Koreans have actually tried it. Number 67. Incredibly, only 3.2% of South Koreans are overweight, which makes them one of the least obese nations on the planet. Number 68. The most popular type of alcohol in South Korea is soju, a clear distilled beverage similar to vodka that's traditionally made from rice, wheat, or barley. The alcohol content of soju varies from about 17% all the way up to 53%, and is usually consumed neat. Neat. Number 69. Wang Kong. <laughs> Denizens of the nation's capital of Seoul are tied with the people of Tokyo as the most sleep-deprived city slickers in the world. The inhabitants of both cities get the least amount of sleep for any residents of major cities on Earth, at less than six hours of sleep a night. Number 70. In Korean, the word Seoul literally means capital city. I'm starting to get the impression that Koreans are fairly literal people. Number 71. Seoul is home to Lot World, a major recreation complex that houses the world's largest indoor theme park. The complex also contains shopping malls, a luxury hotel, a monorail, a Korean folk museum, sport facilities, and cinemas. Or as the Americans call it, movie theaters. Number 72. Tourists to South Korea are often drawn to Haesingling Park, which is located in the northeast of the country. The plain is notable for containing roughly highly stylized statues of... Uh, you can you can see what that is. Which were erected to appease a fabled virgin woman who drowned at sea. It's best if you don't ask. Number 73. Similarly, the beaches of South Korea's largest island of Jeju are home to large stone statues called Dolarubang, meaning Stone Grandfather. These statues depict tall figures with bulging faces and suggestively shaped hats, which some have described as, um, what's the word, uh, phallic. It's a popular belief that if newlywed women touch the nose of these statues, they will be blessed with fertility. Number 74. The island of Jeju is also home to Halasan, a shield volcano and the tallest mountain in the country. Halasan measures up at an impressive 6,388 feet in height. Number 75. 
The island of Jeju is also home to the Henyo, or sea women, who are female divers who hunt for sea urchins, abalone, and octopus without using breathing apparatus. This tradition of diving dates back to the 5th century, though it didn't become an exclusively female profession until the 17th century, when significant numbers of men died at war. Number 76. In a practice that probably seems slightly odd to most Westerners, roughly 60% of South Korean families use professionals to find a name for their babies, based on the Chinese zodiac. Number 77. <laughs> Apparently, however, South Koreans need to stop fussing over names to get back to boinking. According to a 2014 study commissioned by the National Legislature, at their current birth rate, South Koreans will go extinct by 2750. Yikes. Number 78. Interestingly, South Koreans may not consider themselves to be the same age as foreigners born on the very same day. This is because in South Korea, babies are considered one year old at birth and turn two on the 1st of January. So if a baby is born on the 1st, 1st of December, which I'm told does happen from time to time, they'll turn two the very next day. Sounds like cheating to me. Number 79. Speaking of birthdays, a traditional birthday dish served in South Korea is seaweed soup. Ugh, I think I'll stick with Colin the Caterpillar, thank you very much. Number 80. When South Koreans reach the age of 60, they are often thrown a lavish party called a Hwangap, which originated before the development of modern medicine, when very few people lived to that age. It's also a significant birthday because the traditional Korean calendar is based on a 60-year cycle. Number 81. Christmas is an official holiday in South Korea, as roughly a third of all South Koreans are Christians. However, the festival apparel worn by South Korean Santa Claus isn't red, but blue, or even more rarely, green. He is also known as Santa Kuluso, which means Grandfather Santa. Number 82. In South Korea, April 14th is a holiday reserved for single people who did not receive gifts on Valentine's Day. The holiday is known as Black Day, which refers to the sticky black noodles called jajamyeon, which are eaten in mourning of their lack of relationships. <laughs> God, that is... oh, that's bleak. Number 83. South Koreans celebrated the Harvest Moon Festival, known as Chuseok, by travelling back to their hometowns to visit and clean the graves of their ancestors, to which they bring gifts such as fine foods. Man, I wish I was a long-dead Korean ancestor so people would bring me food. Number 84. Originally conceived as a way to advertise mud cosmetics, South Korea's annual Boryong Mud Festival attracts millions of people from around the world every year. For 10 whole days, mud enthusiasts partake in mud marathons, mud wrestling, and mud photo contests, as well as a nice relaxing mud massage, just to, you know, take the edge off. Number 85. It's a popular belief in South Korea, as well as Japan and Taiwan, that one's blood type can determine a person's personality, character, and social compatibility. This belief is so profoundly ingrained into Korean culture, it may even affect to whom a person decides to marry. Number 86. In South Korea, it's commonly believed that leaving an electric fan on overnight in an unventilated room will kill anyone inside sleeping. Though this belief is declining amongst younger Koreans, it remains a persistent superstition in Korean culture, despite literally zero evidence to support it. Number 87. Of course, we can't talk about South Korea without mentioning the biggest event of 2012, Gangnam Style. The infectious pop song, written and performed by South Korean K-pop star Psy, was released on July the 15th, 2012, accompanied by a quirky and hilarious music video. The song quickly went viral, topped the charts in 30 countries around the world, and on the 21st of December, Gangnam Style became the first YouTube video to reach 1 billion views. Which this one will too, right guys? <laughs> uh. Number 88. Indeed, the expansion of South Korean culture throughout the world has been dubbed Hayu, meaning the flow of Korea. The sorely missed, Q comments saying, oh, sounds a liberal cuck, uh, former President Barack Obama even referred to this during a visit to South Korea in March of 2012. Number 89. In 2012, a prison in the South Korean city of Pohang became the first in the world to introduce robotic prison guards. The bots are equipped with 3D depth cameras, a two-way communication system, and software capable of identifying certain human behavior patterns, allowing them to effectively conduct patrols through prison corridors, albeit under human supervision. Number 90. South Korea is also home to Yuido Full Gospel Church, which boasts the largest congregation on the planet with over 830,000 members as of 2016. Sadly, the church faces a declining congregation after its founder, David Yonggi Cho, received a three-year suspended sentence for embezzling $12 million in church funds. Awkward. Number 91. Somewhat hurtfully in South Korea, a unmarried person is often referred to as a big baby. <laughs> it's weird, but sure, okay. Number 92. Many Korean homes have heated floors, a tradition called ondol, meaning warm stone, which dates all the way back to 1000 BC. More than 90% of houses in South Korea have modern floor heating, allowing people to eat, sleep, and watch TV on the warm floor. Number 98. Taxis in South Korea are literally color-coded according to the level of service offered. A grey or white taxi will offer a basic service with a qualified but potentially inexperienced driver, whereas luxury cars with experienced drivers are painted black, like Rolling Stones songs. Number 94. 
South Korea's national sport is Taekwondo, which was developed in the 1940s and 50s out of Chinese martial arts like Karate and the indigenous Korean martial arts like Taekyeon, Subak, and Gwonbyop. Number 95. Shiram is a Korean form of wrestling that can be traced all the way back to 37 BC, starting as competition between villages before it developed into a fully-fledged martial art. Today, Shiram matches are held in stadiums and are quite often televised. Number 96. Baseball is one of the most popular sports in South Korea, where it's known as Yagu. There are, in fact, a number of interesting differences between Yagu and American-style baseball. For instance, teams are named after corporations like Samsung and Kia, not cities. Baseball in Korea is also accompanied by cheerleaders, which is usually weirdly not the case in the United States. Number 97. Interestingly, basically the only reason baseball even exists in South Korea is because of dictator General Chun Du Hwan, who established the Korean Baseball Organization in 1981 as a way to pacify the people of South Korea, who kept protesting his regime and attempting to revolt. Still, he ended up in prison anyway. Bad luck, old chap. Number 98. A popular pastime in South Korea is kite flying. On the last day of the new moon before the Lunar New Year, it's a tradition to let go of your kites in the hope your bad luck will float away with them. Number 99. Another popular sport in South Korea is 10-pin bowling, which was introduced to the country by American GIs during the Korean War. Good god, it's number 100. Oh! Since the game launched in 1988, nearly half of all copies of the American military science strategy game StarCraft, one of the best-selling games in history, have been sold in South Korea. Number 101! The world's oldest existing astronomical laboratory, known as Chomsong Day Observatory, is located in Jiangshu, South Korea, where it was built during the mid-600s. The name of the structure, Chomsong Day, means stargazing platform in Korean. So that was 101 facts about South Korea. Which one did you enjoy the most? Let me know in the comments down below. Did I miss any? Let me know in the comments down below. Did I? I mean, I almost definitely did, but mispronounce anything? Let me know in the comments down below. While you're down there, give this video a like and subscribe to 101 Facts if you haven't done so already so you can get even more of this kind of thing in your news feeds every damn week for the rest of either your life or my life. In the meantime, here are two videos you're going to really dig. I, I know you very well, so I know you're going to like them. Bye.